Hey everybody, this is Graham Cunningham, head golf professional at Framingham Country Club in Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how I use the swing callus balance plate with my players to help them better understand uh, how to effectively use the ground to change the way their golf club swings, interacts with the ball, and ultimately change their ball flight. Uh, I think in this case, or in this example, more specifically, what I want to talk about is uh, how we can use the swing callus balance plate uh, to really help our average club golfer that tends to swing pretty hard to the left uh, across the ball, slicing in, in shots and hitting poles. So in this case, we have a player here that has a club path that's seven degrees to the left with the club face. A degree opens the path, hitting down on it quite steeply at seven degrees. Uh, this is a pretty typical shot for this young man. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll take a look at his swing catalyst information. Uh, as he gets up to the top, <coughs> excuse me, of his backswing, he gets to about 88% of his pressure uh, into his trail leg. So here's what swing callus has really helped me understand and discover a little bit better is there's two main reasons for, let's say, the average club golfer that tends to swing pretty hard to the left. Uh, as it relates to their uh, center of pressure information as to why that might occur. The first is pretty obvious, uh, is that their center of pressure never moves forward enough in the downswing, would tend to stay more in line with the right foot uh, or the trail leg, and they would tend to spin out and swing across the golf ball. And the second, uh, being a little bit more rare, but one that I've certainly found um, in a few of my players, is that their center of pressure tends to move too far forward too early in the downswing, and this player certainly falls into that category. Uh, I think it's important to note that when that does occur, there tends to be an excessive amount of rotation in the body as well. Um, and so at this point, we'll look at this player when its lead, uh, lead arm or left arm is parallel to the ground. He's already at about 80, shade over 80, 81% forward with his center of pressure. Um, a little more than my liking. I would typically like to see this at about 50, 50-50-ish uh, 50, at this point in the downswing. So again, we can take it up to the top of the backswing where he's about 88%. In a very short span of time, he gets his center of pressure uh, from 88% on his trail leg to about 80% on his lead leg. Um, and as his golf club continues now down into the golf ball, he's at a point where it's pretty much irrecoverable. He having to use his hands and his wrists to make up for it send the golf club out and then back across the ball at impact with an excessive amount of rotation. His center of pressure has moved a little bit more forward and in towards his left heel uh, due to that rotation as well. So what I would typically do with a player like this is once we look at that swing catalyst information, um, we would take a look at you know how we can change this for him. With, in this case, just a really simple set of auditory cues for him. Uh, to try to change the sequencing of his downswing, uh, which is for him to feel like his hips were very active going back and then very passive coming down, uh, which would allow him to then, his arms to win the race, what he would feel, his arms winning the race to the golf ball. So now as his hips are a little bit more active going back, his club swings around his body a little bit more to my liking. Uh, hips are a little bit more active. Now as he starts to come down, uh, controlling the forward movement in that center of pressure when his left arm is parallel to the ground. Uh, at this point, he is feeling like his hips are dead quiet, almost no motion. Uh, and he's in that about 50-50 range, uh, lead arm parallel to the ground. Now, as he continues down into the golf ball, you'll see obviously his, ball, his body is rotating uh, at a much slower rate than before. Uh, when he strikes the golf ball, he's a shade over 80% at 82% of his pressure forward. Uh, and then through the shot, we'll see that his arms, his trunk, his hips, and the golf club are all synchronized a little bit better through this hit. Um, so again, just a simple set of auditory cues for him to help control how fast his center of pressure moves forward. Um, you know, to try to stop the golf club from swinging so far across the golf ball through the hit. Uh, and in doing so, now we've changed it to the point where his club path is seven degrees from the inside, with the club face four degrees close to the path, allowing him to hit that nice baby draw he's always wanted, uh, but also with a much higher smash factor. So even though we have a club speed here that's a little bit lower, he is getting about 146 yards of distance on this eight iron, 
where in the original swing it was about, I believe, 156 yards. Um, in a matter of time, probably in another half an hour after the swing and in the, in the sessions to come, we did get his speed up to about the mid-80s, high 80s. He was hitting this 8-iron uh, with a very similar club delivery, um, more of the 165, 170-yard uh, range at times. So, again, if we just want to take a look at a comparative look in terms of controlling center of pressure, again, him feeling like the hips were very active going back, very passive coming down, uh, we can look at, you know, when his lead arm is parallel to the ground in the original swing and at impact in the new swing, his overall center of pressure uh, is very, very similar in these two swings. Uh, it's also, I think, important to note then the new swing and controlling the movement of his body, uh, the overall trace of his center of pressure is much more compressed, uh, something that I like to see a little bit more with an iron. Uh, so this is how I would use the swing catalyst plate in my lessons to help players change how their golf club swings and interacts with the ball and then ultimately getting them to change their ball flight. Uh, if anybody has any questions for me, uh, please feel free to email me at graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at framinghamcc.com, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much.